Hello, welcome to Connor and Ali's podcast. I'm Connor. Uh, Ali, say hello. Hello. Yeah, so Ali's an ignorant Man United fan. I'm a cool City fan. Uh, we genuinely do not like each other, but we're mates anyway, so. Uh, yeah, City fan. <laughs> so, what, how are we going to start this off? Uh, oh. Well, first off, we've got a lot to talk about. Uh, Mane leaving Liverpool. Bayern um, announcing that Lewandowski no longer no longer has a future. Timber and Man United. So let's get into this right now. Uh, but in other news, Real Madrid have just won the Champions League one 0 against Liverpool. Um, it was a good match. Well done. Yeah, well done, Real Madrid. You dirty cheating brats. <laughs> nah, they went. They went through a hard. Hey, they were time wasting. They were time wasting. <laughs> Why did I say that in a Scouse accent and I'm not I even Scouse? What are you on about? I'm on about Liverpool being denied a quadruple and I'm a Man City fan. But, no, yeah. yeah. That all changed. They didn't get their quadruple now, did they? <laughs> but anyway, um, let's start off. Mane leaving Liverpool. This got announced the day after the final, didn't it, Ali? Yeah, so, um, I, I don't know if you heard about this, but, um, uh, so, if anyone listening to the podcast, um, is interested in listening, um, basically, Sadio Mane, labelled the best player in the world by James Redmond, for, you know, that Scouser guy said, Sadio Mane is the best footballer in the world, uh, that guy, he's leaving Liverpool this, uh, summer, he could be going to Bayern, however, there can always be a change in plan. But, um, wow. Yeah. So uh, no, but Ali, if Bayern don't buy Mane, who do you think will get him, and why? If Bayern don't sign him. Yeah. Hmm. Why? I have a feeling maybe a Barcelona or a Juventus, one of those. I've always thought Barcelona would always sign Mane after he was done at Liverpool for some reason. I, I just had a feeling that Barcelona would sign him. It's, it's probably it's either Juventus or Barcelona. Yeah, and, from, and for me, it's either going to be Manchester City. I know, I'm, and I'm not saying that because I'm, I'm a Man City fan or anything, but I genuinely think it's either Manchester City or it's going to be Barcelona. But then again... But, but then again, it could be a club, it could be a club like, um, I don't know, Dortmund. But I doubt he's going to go there. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to the story about Lewandowski. Yes, so eleven... So, uh, Lewandowski has just announced his buying um, career is over and he wants to leave the club so he no longer has a future at Bayern Munich after just winning... Is it his 10th Bundesliga in a row or is, or is that just the clubs? I think it's, it's the clubs. Yeah. I mean, it's either that, it's either that or uh, I need to search Wikipedia and I'm not doing that. Yeah, But no, yeah. So Ali, um, he could be going to Barcelona. We already know that. But again, who do you think is a top candidate to buy Lewandowski? Like you just said, Barcelona. Yeah, but I mean, apart from Barcelona, I actually don't know. Actually, I just see him with Barcelona. I I I would see him going to Inter or Liverpool or somewhere like that. Well, not Liverpool, more like Chelsea, because they need a good striker. Back then, I would have said Madrid when Ronaldo was there, but yeah, like, oh, for me, it's Barcelona now. Yeah, and the thing is, um, it, it could go um, could go wrong because Barcelona are in one billion financial debt. So that's uh, so I just sold Messi. They'll have to sell Lewandowski soon, or he'll have to retire. Yeah. Um, another thing I'd like to address is um, due to the recent transformation by Barcelona in the last couple of months, are Barcelona back to their very best or 
do they still need a bit of work? I still think, I still think they need a bit of work. Yeah. Just a bit, not a yeah, I mean, they have got a great manager in Xavi, who is a club legend, and they've got fantastic Absolutely. youth players, like, um, they've got fantastic Pedro. youth players. Yeah, Pedri, Javi, um, there was another one, uh, Rishi Puig, and uh, Eric Garcia, who, just putting it out there, used to play for Manchester City. <laughs> but, uh, no, yeah, they've got some great youngsters. However, a lot of their players now, who are legends like Busquets from PK. They're past their prime now, and I think they genuinely do need to leave the club or retire. Yeah. Because if you think about it, PK has not had his... I think it's probably like one of his worst seasons. He is not at his very best anymore. Because I think Messi might have left. That's what I think things changed after Messi left. Yeah. And um, I heard something about um, PK telling the Barcelona president, Laporta, I, I heard something that PK told the club president of Barcelona to sell Lionel Messi, just so he could be captain. I heard, I heard Messi and PK got into an argument after that. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't blame him because Messi at Barcelona, I never wanted that to happen. I never wanted him to leave Barcelona. But I think if PK didn't have that talk with Laporta, he genuinely would not have left and he would have agreed to a much more lower salary. So what's our next topic? Our next topic is... Um, basically talk about all the good stuff um but we'll we'll, we'll continue to talk about more um another topic is you know Jurin Tim is that is that his name Jurin Timber going to Manchester United yeah yeah um so yeah Timber plays for Ajax um he he's a great centre back um, as we've heard um he's played under Eric Ten Hag but now um, there may be a chance he's going to be leaving Ajax and he's going to be joining Ten Hag at Manchester United. So what do you think? You know, I think that good deal. Young, talented. Yeah. Um, and that's what we need really. But I mean, as we've established, um, Ajax and their youngsters are quite... They're, they're really good with bringing up youth. And uh, as we've seen in 2019, when they reached the semi-final for the Champions League, one of the best moments in football, I think. I agree. Great talent they made it, like Fanti de Jong. Yeah, um, Matthias de Ligt. Matthias de Ligt is a captain, yeah. even though he's only 19. Um, Donny van der Beek, Jürgen Timber, Anthony. I genuinely think Anthony will join Manchester United. Yeah, I heard Man United are looking to sign players like yeah and also um if you think about it manchester united they're great with like youth and um, they brought up players like mark rashford um however I, I, think if, I think if rashford doesn't work out next season i think anthony would be a great fit for a replacement yeah um but also i wanted to talk about something else um and that is is Marcus Rashford's Manchester United career over, or is will it carry on? However, it's going to lead. Uh, it's going to need a lot of uh, improvement due to what Rangnick, how he left him out. I think Rashford needs to give him another chance and let If he doesn't improve, I think his career might be over at United. I'd say get rid of him then. I, I mean, we saw we saw that, didn't we? How he played under Jose, and before Jose got sacked, Marcus wasn't playing his best football. Then we had Ole Gunnar Solskjaer who came in. Marcus played some of the best football in his career. He did really well. Yeah, he did really well. And then before Ole got sacked, he wasn't playing well again, and Rangnick has just completely left him out. I didn't... Ollie Gunnar Solskjaer knew how to use him. I didn't think other managers know how to use him yet. Probably. Yeah, and the thing is, is that Oli, I, I don't think Oli was given the fair chance that he should have been given. So basically, um, 
I think any manager needs about two, three years to build a team. Oli only got two seasons to build a team, and due to and because of the Glazers and the board, they thought um, two years was enough for Oli, and they sacked him. Yeah. Yeah, because if you think about it, Oli, I think Oli got. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, Oli got the most out of the players, didn't he? In a way. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Got the best out of them. Yeah. Um, including. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you took the fab lord. Yeah. I oh, know. Right. <laughs> I just funny about it. Right, but, um, anyway. Um,. Another thing is, um, um, <laughs> what man? Sorry, um, I, I know you just turned on your camera, but it was quite unexpected, caught me off guard. Oh, sorry, uh, but uh, anyway, um, <laughs> sorry, uh, there's a new youngster, um, at Monaco who's coming through called. Um, too many. Um, he's wanted by all the big clubs, um, especially like Manchester United, Manchester City, Liverpool. He's wanted by all the best. Even Real Madrid want him. Um, Ali, have you heard of too many? So too many is a French youngster at Monaco. He's been playing really good football and. All of the best teams like Man City, Man United, Liverpool, Real Madrid, they all want to buy him because of his really good ability. So if he's that good, should he be signed? Yeah. I mean, I, I think what we've, again, what we've previously established with Real Madrid is that they love to buy youngsters too. Because um, apparently Florentino Perez, aka one of the worst men ever in football, because he nearly started the Super League, um, he basically he planned out a second era of Galacticos. So basically, if to our viewers, if you don't know, um, the Galacticos were Zidane, Figo, Ronaldo, Beckham, Raúl. He basically wanted to make a new era of Gatko's. So, uh, just imagine Zinedine Zidane, Figo and Raul, but now you would have Haaland, Mbappe and Camavinga. However, that didn't turn out. Mbappe decided to stay at PFG. Haaland going to Manchester for Ian Fummer and Camavinga already at Real Madrid. So, yeah. Anyway, let's do Mbappe's contract PSG Yes, let's talk about that. Um, Mbappe, um, to our viewers, you probably know, um, Mbappe has been given a... How many, how many years has he got on his contract? I, uh, I don't Is it 2026 he's staying for? I actually don't know. I think it's... So, for now, he's signed a new deal for 2026. We don't know. But apparently, what's intrigued me is that he's been given full control over PSG. Is that true? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but then again, um, that means people like um, the the PSG chairman, uh, they're they're not going to have as much control um, over the club because Mbappe is going to have a lot of control over PSG if that happens. But no, yeah. Um, right, Ali, I've got a question for you and I want you to come out with your genuine answer, your, your honest answer. Are Ronaldo and Messi still the best in the world or have they fizzled out and it's time for Ronaldo, it's time for Haaland and Mbappe? I think Messi and Ronaldo are always going to be top players. Yeah. But I think maybe in one or two years, that's when Mbappe and Haaland start to take over. Yeah. They've already started now. Oh, it's going to take over for like one or two years. 
Yeah, and one of the things is that uh, Messi um, and Ronaldo, they've not had their best football this year, haven't they? No. No. Definitely not. Because Ronaldo... Yeah, because Ronaldo said he he wanted to win trophies at Man United. He, he's finished sixth in the league. He's not won any trophies. And um, Messi, he's won the league, yes, but he has not scored as many goals as he did at Barcelona. Yeah, I think he's just not used to the football in Paris. Yeah. I think he's just used to the team being all about him mostly, I think. Yeah, it's a common thing because like, if a player stays for that period of time at one club, he's going to find it harder to get used to another club, isn't he? Yeah. But also, it's because like Messi's like 35, Ronaldo's 37. They, they're getting old. They're not as good as they used to be. Yeah. Because like, if you think about it, the Messi that we're seeing now is not the is not the Messi that we saw in 2011 under Pep Guardiola and he has players like Xavi, Iniesta and Dani Alves around him. He's not that player anymore. I think time, time is just running out for these Yeah. Because I mean, it's like that. My life's just out. Yeah, because it's like that. Pele and Maradona, their their careers ran out because they got older. Lota Mateus, his career ran out, he got older. Zinedine Zidane and Ronaldo, their careers ran out. And it's happening now to Messi and Ronaldo. Uh, not the Ronaldo we just talked about, people. I think we should address... Uh, also, um, I think we should address my recent Twitter thing where I put... Uh, who is better, Messi or Ronaldo? And Ronaldo is winning, which is absolute garbage. <laughs> do you do you genuinely think? Do you genuinely think in your heart, deep down, that Ronaldo is better than Messi? One hundred percent. No, because you see, Messi has got seven Ballon d'Ors, right? That means he's been voted player in the world. Granted, the uh, last one didn't count. But if you think about it, Messi is a better um, player than Ronaldo. And I'll tell you why. He's gotten to a World Cup final. He's gotten to... Base, he's played around some of the greatest players ever. Uh, Mess, uh, no, Ronaldo has played under a fraction of those players. Okay, people say Rooney's a great player, but he's not really. He's just a goal scorer, and that's really it, isn't it? And if you think about it, Ryan Giggs, okay, he's a great um, manager. Um, no, uh, why am I saying manager? I mean player. Um, Alex Ferguson, he's one of the greatest managers. However, he lost two Champions League finals to Messi and Pep Guardiola. So what does that tell you? Can I tell you something about Ronaldo? What? You want to talk about the Champions League? Alright, let's talk about Champions League. Only five or six of the Champions Leagues. I'm open to any discussion. This guy thinks the Nations League doesn't count. This guy thinks the Nations League doesn't count. The Nations the Nations League, everybody, and I'm going to address this right now, my honest opinion on the Nations League, it is absolutely pointless. You're having two European Championships, basically nearly all at once, and basically, this is Europe's version of the Copa America just being played every single year for absolutely no reason. Okay, what? What? Never mind. Um, but also, I would just like to address Messi has won all of his Champions League finals. Ronaldo has won five, but he has lost once. Messi's lost none of them. Okay, Ronaldo, international trophies. Ronaldo, Messi, Ronaldo, Messi, in history. I'm excluding the Nations League, everybody. The Nations League is a farce of a trophy. No, because if England won a guaranteed World League, they would have it. No, I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't. It would be pointless. You would. You would. I wouldn't. I knew you would. I knew you would. 
It's coming home. No, I will, um, basically, no, the only time I will ever count the Nations League as a trophy is unless, basically, the, Euro the Euros are cancelled forever, maybe. But until then, um, the Nations League, in my eyes, does not exist as a tournament. It does. Hmm. Also, um, can I? Um, I'd like to point out um, what. So basically, um, on on the Champions League final, the final was delayed until half nine, ba basically because of fans who had tickets got uh, were late to the stadium in time, and they sprayed and the French police sprayed tear gas into people's uh, into people. Where were they? Yeah, and the thing is, is that they had tickets. If they've got tickets, let the fans in. Yeah. Also, I'd like to um, I'd like to point out Allison. Uh, is he carries point two after what happened? No, definitely not. Alisson has been great for years now. If that goal, if Benzema's goal stood, if Benzema's goal stood, it definitely, he definitely would have been Carrier's point two. No. Yeah. No, no. And that goal should have stood because he was offside. Yeah, I know, but look at the facts. Look at the facts. If you think about it, um, um, Alisson... I don't know what he was doing. He was crawling on the floor and he couldn't get back up in time and Real Madrid scored an offside goal. I mean, look at last season. He was... I actually thought he was going down the same road as Tavius because he could make a mistake left, right, centre. Yeah. But this season, only one was... He won the goal tied with Edison. Yeah. And... I don't think he'd be the same... And last season, I'm just I'm just gonna point this out. Ali will probably torment me about this for years to come. Manchester City last season lost the Champions League final to Chelsea. Uh, but he lost the final to Villarreal. We lost the final to Italy. But if you think about it, the 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 final last year, City between Chelsea, is basically like the final this year. A, a great Liverpool team lost against a very bad Real Madrid team. I, I said there's a draw in the final to my dad. I kept on saying that um, that Liverpool are basically Man City from last year. Because in a Real Madrid are basically like Chelsea. Yeah, I, I mean, a basic, uh, I'm basically, I, I'm going to say this, um, for, uh, and I genuinely think this, Real Madrid should not have won that competition and if you look at if you if you put that on paper the Liverpool team and I'm just going to say this the Liverpool team are a lot younger than the uh, Real Madrid players I mean Tony Kroos and Gareth Bale they're all like in their 30s Modric is 36 if you put that on paper the Liverpool team should have won against Real Madrid shouldn't they Yeah, if um, if you're here, there's nothing left in between the final last year and this year. There were both youngsters who scored in this final and last final. The last year, kind of, you know how annoyed you get. And um, Vinicius Junior. Yeah, I would just like to um, address our viewers. If uh, if you hear Ali's voice freezing it's because we're talking via whatsapp and also it's because um ali's connection is very bad and also i would just like to point out that every day at school ali torments me about the chelsea win against manchester city last year and it's one year on yeah, and and the thing is, is that you lost the final to Villarreal. However, it brought us in a way closer together as mates because we both lost finals. It was a very depressing year for Manchester last year. Yeah. Manchester, both of the teams lost European final. Then they 
they start scoring England together and what, and then England basically lose. Yeah. All, oh, actually, speaking of England, uh, we've got the 2022 World Cup in Qatar coming up in a couple of months. Ali, who do you think will be the top four team? Who do you think will be the top four teams in the competition? Well, like, what, like the top four teams, like, like yeah. the top four teams, like the winner and the second place, okay. And first place is coming home to England. Yeah. Place. I'm going to say Italy, but then I remembered that. They've, they've not qualified. Woo! I actually think second might be Brazil. Okay, yep. Yeah. Uh, can you explain that for us, please? I think Brazil have great players like in Neymar, Vinicius Jr. They have great talent. Yeah. So I think England. I think Germany third, and then fourth Argentina. Oh yeah. All right. Um. So basically, these are my predict. These are my predictions. I've got two predictions. For, um. So I'll go with my first one. England, uh, so my first one, England, obviously, they're gonna, um, it's coming home to us lads this year, uh, World Cup, do you know what I'm trying to say? Um, second place, I think, genuinely, will be Spain. No, I don't think so. No, uh, no it's yeah, just because they've got some great youngsters in their team now. Yeah, yeah they still also have... Ramos, PK. <sighs> yeah. Um, third, in third place, you're, uh, uh, people are probably going to say never going to happen because it probably isn't. Senegal. Nah. Really? Nah. I think they've got a good chance. I think they're going to get knocked out in the round of 16. I don't think they're going to make it further than that. I think I th I've all and I've, I've I've said this for a very very long time now. I would love to see an African team get to a World Cup semi final or final or win the World Cup. I would love to see that from an African team. What is your favorite African team? Mine is Senegal. Senegal too. I think they have a great team. Yeah, and in fourth place, I've got to say it. It will be Germany. Yeah, Germany will finish fourth or third, but I think third. Yeah. I think they're going to improve considering the manager that they have now. And my second prediction, which I know will not happen, first Argentina, second England, third Holland, and fourth Brazil. <laughs> Here's something that we both haven't put into any of this. What? Portugal. I don't. I think Portugal will either go out in the group yeah. or the round of sixteen. They're not strong enough as like the big teams like us. Yeah. Also, if you take into account Ronaldo, if you think about it, some of those players play for uh, Manchester United, so Bruno Fernandes and Cristiano Ronaldo. If you think about it, they've not been very good this year, aren't they? They've not been very good at footy. Yeah, Ronaldo, he's, he's ups and down, but mostly ups. As for Bruno Fernandes, I don't know what happened to him. He's yeah. Cross, like, ever since Kane. Yeah. Also, um, uh, uh, um, do you think... Um, uh, uh, people have been predicting this for some reason. Do you think the United States can get to the semi-final? No. No, me neither. No, that's too far. Because people, all right, they've got some young talent like Zach Steffen and Christian Pulisic and other great players like Gio Reyna. However, they're just not strong enough yet. Wait until 2026, they will reach the final. I think the round of 16 or the group stages, they'll get knocked out. Yeah. Well, my guess is the group stages. However, in 2026, I think the United States will get to the final, however they will lose. I think that final might be against Germany if that happens. It could be against England if we get knocked out. It could be uh, 2026. Scour Southgate might, might get knighted. We don't know. Let's talk about um, the World Cup curse of how... Yes! And then they get knocked out right away. Yes! 
so to our so to our viewers, if you've been if you've been um, living under a rock for the past couple of years, in 2002 France were reigning world champions. They went out in the group. 2010 Italy went out in the group. They'd won the World Cup in 2006. 2014 same thing happened to Spain. 2018 Germany, and in 2022 could it happen to France? I think yes. I actually think France are going to break the curse. Do you I think? Don't think it's going to happen. Um, I, I don't know if you've watched this, but this happened when Germany. This happened when Germany went out of the World Cup. Um, do you think? Um, and the Germany fan said this. He said. Um, he said something along the lines: If France go out in the group, then it is a curse. But if France get out the group, then it means that all the reigning world champions have been playing very badly since they won the World Cup. I think it's a curse. I do. I do. It's like that because I, I think, I think an, another thing. They had incredible teams. They had incredible teams. Yeah, and it's like that. Um, if you think about it, there's another curse, the number seven United curse. <laughs> nah, I think that curse broke when Edison Cavani came last season. Yeah, is he leaving Man United? Yeah, he's leaving, he's leaving. I think his, he's, I think his contract expiring. Yeah. Um, I also, um, there's another thing um, that I'd like to, um, uh, that I'd like to add. Benfica, uh, so Ali, you might not know this to our viewers, you might know this if you're um, football aficionados, but Benfica, after they won their second European Cup, their manager, Bella Gutmann, he, he was denied a pay rise and he resigned and he said to the club president, not in 100 years will Benfica win the European Cup and the very next year, they lost the European Cup final and they would lose the European Cup final again against Inter Milan. Then a couple of years later, they um, in 1968, Manchester United won 4-1 over Benfica. And Eusebio, he had some of the best chances all game. He scored, um, no, well, he didn't score. He, he had a really good shot which was on target. 99% it should have gone in. However, Manchester United's goalie denied him from such close range and Benfica lost the final and ever since they kept losing the final whether it was Champions League or Europa League. What well, Ali, what do you think about what I've just said? Um, it's similar to my Mar- Mario Torre, it's a curse. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah Torre curse. We won't talk about that on here. <laughs> We won't, we won't talk about that on here, please. My favourite curse. <laughs> That's my favourite cooking cookie. <laughs> Sorry, Ali. It is. It is getting me mad now because Man City lost the Champions League final and apparently Yaya Torre cursed Man City. So if he's listening to this, Yaya Torre, please lift the curse. I, I guarantee you probably not. Yeah, but then again, let's think about it. Um, I so there's another. Um, so let's move away from the curses now. Do you like? Let's go over our all-time football elevens. Okay. So goalkeeper, who's it going to be all time? So for me, um, I've got loads of choices. I'm either going to go with Peter Schmeichel, Gordon Banks, or Manuel Neuer. You're missing one person. Gianluigi. Yashin. Yashin. Oh, yeah, I guess so. Yashin. But. It... Yeah. But I think Gordon Banks, yeah, okay, he made the great save against Pele and he won the World Cup. Um, Peter Schmeichel, he virtually carried Manchester United. For, for for years in the goal net, but Manuel Neuer has been exceptional for the past ten years. I think Justin still gets it. Ballon d'Or winner, only keeper to win it. Mm. So I'm gonna put Yashin in mine. I'm. Uh, do you know what? I might as well do it. I'm going to put Yashin in there. Uh, right back. Right back. Um, I think 
I've, I've got to go with this one. It's got to be um, Danny Alves. Mine's actually, I'm considering Danny Alves, but I'm also at the time considering Kathy. Ooh, yeah. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to edit her in, in Danny Alves. Yeah, um, so are you going with Cafu? Daniel Alves, Edgy Zilf. I'm going Danny Alves. For our two centre-backs, I'm going for Franz Beckenbauer and Bobby Moore. Bobby Moore also being my captain. <laughs> hmm. I actually need to think about this. You can't get better than Bobby Moore and Franz Beckenbauer, Ali. You just can't. I'm gonna go with Sergio Ramos and Puyol. Mm, yep, yeah, yeah, okay. I think, yeah, I think, yeah. I think Puyol and Ramos are good. However, for me, it, it's yeah, just. Change, change in our lineups now. There'll have to be a change in our It's not the same anymore. Yeah, so I think, yeah, it's Bobby Moore and Franz Beckenbauer for me. For you, it's Ramos and Puyol. For our left back, I've got to go with Roberto well, Carlos. It will be Ramos. Yeah. For our captain, no, well, for our captain, mine's Bobby Moore, yours with Ramos, right? Wait, uh, uh, wait, we forgot, we forgot another goalkeeper. Who? For that we should have said when we were talking about the goalkeepers, Casillas. How the hell could we forget Casillas? Seriously? Yeah, I'm not. I just do that when I do a Ramos. Oh, Real Madrid. You see, let's put the legends aside. Casillas and Manuel Neuer. Who do you genuinely think is better? Casillas. Really? Yeah, I think he's an underrated keeper and he's been incredible. He is. He, he is an underrated <laughs> footballer. And the way Real Madrid fans treated him in the end was sad. Yeah. Was sad. But, so... Anyway, let's move on to left back. Roberto Carlos for me. The best left back in the world is yeah, Roberto Carlos. Same, same. Yeah. Same, I agree. Yeah. No question for me. Right, so... I'm going to go for four three three, flat. Same. I'm going with just a normal four three three. Yeah. So in defensive midfield, for me, uh, it's got to be Lota Mateus. That guy could do anything. Long shots, tackles, you name it. He was just a great, great player. Okay. For me, I'm gonna go with. I don't have enough time. No, it's the truth. Paul Scholes. Ooh, Paul Scholes. Right. Okay, um, yeah, Paul, yeah, Paul Scholes, he's a great player. Um, however, for my two central midfielders, I'm going to, uh, to pick... Yeah, I wouldn't have mine in mind as well. Uh, yeah, but I'm going to pick... Right, so they both play like centre-forward, however, they were good in midfield too. So I'm going to go with Pele and Johan Cruyff. Oh, really? Yes, I'm Xavi. Great duo. Of all time. I'm forgetting about Xavi and Iniesta. Oh, no, nah, but for me, it's just Pele and Cruyff. For now, my opinion may change in the next couple of weeks. Um, for left wing, who's your left winger? Mine's Ryan Giggs. Mm. I actually don't know about my left winger. I'm going to go with Ronaldinho. Of course, you actually you, you had to, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah. Right winger, would it? Um, I'm gonna go with um, Lionel Messi. He has played right winger before. Yeah, yeah I'll go with Messi as well. Yeah. And for my and finally for my striker, well not finally, um, but uh -huh. for my striker. I am going with Ferenc Puskas. He's an icon on FIFA. He played for Hungary and Real Madrid. He scored four goals in a European Cup final. No player has ever broken his record. So I'm going with Puskas. Ronaldo. Who needs Ronaldo? Wait, which one? Cristiano or the Ronaldo? Either Cristiano. Cristiano, okay. And finally, for our manager, we're going to agree straight away it should be Fergie. Ferguson. Ferguson. Ferguson, yeah. Anyway, let's move on to a. What? I couldn't hear. Can we come to another debate? Who's better? Pat Guardiola or Sir Alex Ferguson? Fergie? Because some people say Guardiola. Hands down, it's Fergie. Yeah, I'm going to go with Fergie. 
Because if you take it into account, Ferguson's won 49 trophies and Pep Guardiola's only won 32. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to another debate. It's quite popular. Um, who's better at Lampard, Scholes, and Gerard? Gerard. The Scholes. I guess so, but Lampard comes third for me. Scholes second. Hey. Nah, Gerard second. I think Gerard second because it is all, he's he's an incredible player. But how the hell did he not win a Premier League with Liverpool? And also he bowled in the end. He was like, no, let this slip now and ended up slipping. Ooh, actually. Now. And then on top of that, Bill Jones has more Premier League than him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but also uh, taking that uh, taking that into account of like Liverpool, they also had a curse that you may not know about. Okay. Yeah. So basically, uh, Bruce Grobbler, the old Liverpool goalkeeper, you might remember him for his wobbly legs um, in a Champions League penalty shootout. Um, but he basically cursed Liverpool to never win um, a Premier League. Oh, Ali's gone off. That's weird. I'll talk to him in a minute. He'll come. I'm sure he'll uh, he'll be back on the call in a moment. But to the viewers, um, he basically um, he cursed Liverpool. However, he um, he decided he didn't want the curse. So the only way he could do it was to pee on both of the goalposts at Anfield. He never did it. However, I think in 2019 at a Legends friendly match or something, he peed in his water bottle. And he squirted it all along the post. So, Ali, um, I was just telling them, um, basically, Bruce Grobbler cursed Liverpool to never win a Premier League title. However, he decided he didn't want that to happen. So, the only way he could do it was to pee at both of the goalposts at Anfield. <laughs> However, he got, he got caught doing it by security... But he, um, he peed in his water bottle in 2019 at a Legends friendly match and he squirted it at, go, uh, at both of the goalposts at Anfield and then they won a title in 2020. Wow. So yeah, Liverpool curse, would you believe that? Would explain why it took him 30 years to win it. <laughs> it would, yeah. Also, I, just, I watched a video the other day um, about Lionel Messi. And uh, apparently, you if you look at the team now, they've got absolutely no leadership at Barcelona. If you take a look at 2019, 20, 2021 20, seasons, they um basically Lionel Messi basically carried Barcelona, didn't he? He did. He did. Yeah. Obviously, he did. I, I think, but in he a way, that, yeah. Every single player needed Messi to tell them to what to do. And basically, you could tell that Messi was not having... He wasn't happy at Barcelona anymore because he was basically looking around and saying, um, I miss Xavi, I miss Puyol, I miss Iniesta, I miss those guys because they're not there for Barcelona yeah, anymore. In the end, he did lose all his friends. Yeah. He had so many friends at Barcelona that he lost. Yeah, and, and another thing is that, um, if, if you think about it, Marco Royce is the same. He lost all his mates, didn't he? Yeah. He, he makes me even more sad that he lost so many friends. Yeah. And the, so and the sad thing is, is that if he didn't have his injuries, he probably would have been one of the greatest German midfielders ever. Should I tell you what I think? Royce is the most loyal player of all time. Really? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because he's got offered from the clubs. He's been offered by, I think, Man United. Yeah, he got Man United. 2013, before Fergie left. Madrid. And he's and still he turning more around. Just to stay at his club door. Loyal, that's what he called that. Such a loyal guy. Club don't have any more. Yeah. In a way, in a way, I guess Lionel Messi's loyal. However, he got forced out. Let's be honest, he was forced out. He didn't yeah. want to leave. Yeah, he was. He was. He didn't want to leave. He was obviously tell when he had his last ever, um, I think it was a press conference. It was, yeah. Crying up. Yeah. 
Um, but let's talk about what you were talking about earlier, the Real Madrid fans not being very loyal to their legends. Um, Ali, you know more about this than I do. You can talk about this for now. Why would you boo a legend like Ika Casillas out? And then on top of that, Ronaldo, he's done so much for the club. He scored so many goals, had in many important moments, as did El Casillas. And then at the end, after Ronaldo left, they put up a sign saying, who needs Ronaldo? And that's what Casillas just booed. He was just booed. Yeah. And also, it was because if you look at Ronaldo... Okay, yeah. He he. If he didn't, if he never went to Real Madrid, they would have never won of the European Cups that they did. To be fair, they would have. No, and Casillas, you like, you take like his. Twenty sixteen, they would have. I think they would have lost the Champions League to Atleti because Ronaldo got that winning penalty. Yeah, and also, um, Ike Casillas. You think about it. Ike Casillas, he, uh, if you take into account all the trophies he's won, he's won the um, the 2000 European Cup, 2002 European Cup, 2014 European Cup. You take that all into account, that is a great player. Yeah, incredible goalkeeper. There's there's not another goalkeeper like him. I've never seen a goalkeeper like Ike Casillas apart from Manuel Neuer. Manuel Neuer is a sort of a loyal player. Yeah, I would say he's been on Bayern for years. He's, I think, no, I, I think, think something like a two-year contract. I heard. Yeah, because I mean, again, Noya, he's getting old now. He's like thirty-five. He's not gonna stay at Bayern forever. Yeah, and that's just but the sad thing. Some players, just, some players who stayed loyal to their club should just retire there. Yeah, like Royce, uh, like Marco Royce, I know for a fact he's retiring at Dortmund. Yeah. Yeah. I think Totti did as well. Totti retired, Totti started his career out at Roma, retired at Roma. That's the way football legends should be. I think he's a loyal player. Yeah, who else is a loyal player? Oh! Lev Yashin, he, he played at Dinamo Moscow on his first ever game. On his very last game, he played for Dinamo Moscow. Yeah, that's it. Many teams don't have that anymore. Loyal, loyal players. Yeah, because they, if you think about it, they only go because of the big money moves. If it wasn't because of that, they all would have stayed at the clubs that they love. Yeah. It's like that, the MLS. I the only reason players go to the MLS is because of the money. Yeah, I think Mbappe is gonna should have not have signed a new contract with Paris and should have went to Madrid because Madrid have that history and PSG they don't have the history. They don't have Champions League. They don't have any of that like Madrid do. Yeah. Oh. Uh, and I think he's wasting his career by staying at PSG. Yeah, I'd also um, like to point out it's been one, it, well, it's past one year since the European Super League was um, announced. Uh, not that horrible thing. Yeah, that happened one year ago, believe it or not. One of the saddest days of my life. Basically, football is made for the fans, by the fans, and it's enjoyed by the fans as well as the players. However, they just did that for pure greed and money. Let's be honest. Yeah. Because, like, you think about it, all the owners, Chelsea phone if they didn't really care. Man City's owners didn't really care. Man United, oh, they didn't care. Uh, Arsenal didn't care. Real Madrid didn't care. All of those clubs did not care about their history, apart from Bayern and Dortmund and Paris. I mean, Paris, I think the only reason they didn't do it was because they have a deal with, like, Qatar. Ch Chelsea and Man City didn't even need to join anyway. They had the money that they needed. I know, I'm United, many, like many clubs are were still rich. Yeah. Anyway, let's talk about something similar to the Super League. Yeah. Oh, hold on a minute. The Champions League rules. The new rules. Yeah. So, um, the Champions League new rule. Oh, oh. What is worse, the new rules of the Champions League or the Super League? Uh, the Super League. It's pretty much the same thing at this point. It's pretty much the same thing at this point. Yeah, I mean, genuinely, 
um, can I just say something about the Super League? If I bet in the 1950s, like when all the big clubs played in Europe, yeah, um, who won European trophies in, in every single year, um, they would have never agreed to that just for money. They played football because they loved football. Nowadays, lo loads more people, loads more footballers care about the money. They they want to play for money. Uh, they re and some of them don't even care about the football and they don't care about the fans. Yeah. Anyway, let's. I I know. I've just remembered another topic. FIFA twenty three being the last ever FIFA. Yes. Um. Well, that's sad. Well, no, I have that mug. I have that mug at home. Sports Direct. My dad made yeah, me some coffee. Bathroom. My dad made me some coffee and it's Sports Direct. We have three of them. There, the, there's one. There's mine. There's my dad's, and there's my mum's. We all have the same cup. We have only one. I think I got football shoes and I got a mug with it. Yeah. So FIFA 23. How do you feel about that? That's so sad. It's been like nearly three decades. This there was a partnership between EA and FIFA. Think of the positives From though. The um. Yeah, but think, I of the... think of a new name. Why would you name it EA Sports FC for starters? It's not a football team now, is it? Yeah. Also, let's point out um, there is there is a good side to it. So if they don't have the license in, they could call Manchester United a uh, Banterchester United, and they could call us um, Banchester, you know, a city. Okay, I have another topic. What? This is YouTube one. Ooh yes. Wow. Four four tunes, the champion. Four four tunes. They've been around for ages. I really do love their videos. I love the front men. However, yeah. I've genuinely got to say the champions. I'm going to go for 14 because they post... Then for starters, I've watched them since I was a kid. Um, they're OG. Um, oh, the champ. they take a break for so long. And, and rightly so. They take a break for so long. And for 14s, they just post daily, basically. Yeah. And also, um, uh, right, who do you think... Um, yeah... Now, we're going to move on to another debate, um, and then we're going to wrap this video up in a, well, podcast in a couple of minutes. Who do you think is a better club fan? James Redmond, who fed Fadjo Mane for the best footballer in the world, or the, um, the, uh, Braden, the Manchester City fan, that kid. You know that kid who was on the football advert for the Man City fan? Ah, uh, yes. Who do you think is what, better? What, what did he say again? I think he said, uh, I think by him saying something. He he did that video where he were where he got surprised uh, um, by him meeting Pep Guardiola. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, and we all know James Redman for saying Sadio Mane is the best footballer in the world. James Redman. I do that in a Scouse accent for some reason, but no, yeah, I think ah, oh, and I'm not a Man City fan, and I'm not going to say Braden. Even though he is a great Man I, City fan, I've got I to say. I sadly have to admit this. I think Liverpool fans are the best fans. Yeah, in the world. they are. Yeah, uh, James Redmond for me, Ali James Redmond. But also, let's talk about that. Liverpool fans being the best fans in the world. Yeah, I genuinely think that. You have to admit it. They have the best fans. Arsenal, United, deluded, and also some are plastic. Liverpool, they have the most loyal fan base as well. Yeah. Uh, man, uh, I want to explain this. Liverpool are one of the best fan bases because even, like, you know, like, after Hillsborough, all of them just, like, stood together, didn't they? Yeah. And if you think about it, Hillsborough, that should never have happened. It's one of the worst things ever to ever happen in football. However, yeah. um, um, they all stood together. Um, like, um, Liverpool stood together with the fans and the players. And that's just lovely to see, you know, even though a tragedy like that has took place. I've got another debate. I've got another, I got another debate. Yeah. Which is better? The guy who basically carries the United stand, so basically Mark Norbridge, and win the United stand or AFTV with Robbie? The United stand is way better. I did. I have a... They, uh, AFTV, they just lost their vibe after they lost... Oh! 
all the best Claude. all the best ones from AFTV are now gone so like Claude and DT they're all gone now uh, they're just tired Robbie left now. Yeah. Also, can I just... Oh, leave it, but he's still going to be making videos on the United stand. Yeah. Also, um, can I just um, bring up... Um, there's a story in football um, um, about... Have you heard of a manager called Brian Clough? Nah. Nottingham Forest. He won two European Cups with him. Oh. Yeah. Ah, uh, him. Yeah, him. Loudmouth. And Muhammad Ali said, "Cluff, stop talking." And then, and then the um, guy on the present, the, the presenter on the new thing, asked Brian Clough after he saw the video of Muhammad Ali, because Muhammad Ali basically told Brian Clough to shut up. Uh, the new, the uh, sports presenter, the, the the presenter basically said to Brian Clough, "Are you going to stop it?" And guess what Brian Clough said? What? He said, "No, I want to fight him." <laughs> well, but Muhammad Ali was a bo- Muhammad out and full on the greatest boxer of all time stars. Yeah, um, but basically, so Nottingham Forest were going to sign this player, and Brian Clough was going to come over to the house, um, and um, he came over to the house, um, and Brian Clough's nose. He was looking at the wallpaper, and his nose was an inch away from the uh, from the walls, and then he turned around. And um, he got down on his knees <laughs> and started to crawl to the player and said, My knees are killing me. <laughs> but anyway, so, uh, the pl- uh, so he got down on his knees and said, My knees are killing me, son. And he started to crawl to, he started to, crawl to the player. And, he, and the player works out he might be drunk. And he basically negotiates um, um, a deal with Brian Clough. And he says, nah, play, uh, pay him in sunflowers. And he said, um, uh, and, but the player said, do you want to talk to my agent? And said, I don't, and, and Brian Clough said, I don't want to talk to that fat. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but basically, um, um, after that, um, they started to dance to um, Frank Sinatra music. And then Brian Clough made out a ludicrous deal. And he said, we'll pay you in sunflowers. And he said, I've got to go home and talk to my wife about this. And Brian Clough basically said to him, nah, it's done. But guess what? He likes Frank Sinatra and he likes flowers. So he can have that. So he, so the player drives home. He speaks to his wife. And, um, he, sa- and he says to his wife, the player, he says to his wife, you will not believe what's happened. And um, the, his wife's gone like that. Shh. And then he looks in the living room, yeah. And Brian Clough is like this. You all right, son? Sitting, <laughs> sitting in an armchair with the flower pot with a hammer, ready to smash it up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but no, yeah, one of the craziest things in football. Oh God. Let's talk about players who have gone to waste now. Yes. Nathan Greenwood. Yeah, let's talk about that, because I think it's quite a heavy topic, isn't it? So, people, if you don't know, Mason Greenwood got arrested, because several... um, So, basically, his girlfriend, Harriet Robson, posted... Well, or or she was hacked. But anyway, stuff got out online about um, Harriet Robson with a buffed lip and bruvive on her legs and arms and body. And basically, there was a tagline saying... um, um, to everybody who wants to know what Mason Greenwood does to me. And then there was a recording of what sounds like Mason Greenwood basically forcing Harriet to have sex with her. And um, and it's absolutely hideous. And it's, it's all on YouTube. You can go and watch it. But yeah, I, I highly advise people who don't want to um, get into this topic, just don't watch the recording. It's not It's not a camera recording, but it's a voice recording. Yeah. So yeah, but still, that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah. And Benjamin Mendy. Let's talk about that because apparently he's he's been found. Well, not found, but he's on trial for um seven charges of rape and one count of sexual assault, and that is that is bang out of order. 
why isn't he in jail right now if he's and apparently, have and this is what, this and do you remember when all the revelations came out about football, about all those terrible stuff football clubs and football teams do? It was on, yeah. yeah, and basically, I heard, apparently, Manchester City knew about what Benjamin Mendy oh, was doing. That. Yeah, apparently, they knew what he was doing, and they still played him, but they only suspended him. Oh, well, Ali's gone. But apparently they suspended him, um, basically, after he was arrested and the individual was named to be Benjamin Mendy. So that's quite... That, that's bad. I mean... Because, like, um, we'll wait until Ali comes back on. We'll, we'll wait until he comes back on, because there was a fantastic thing... That came back from um, Mark Goldbridge, who um, who you might know from the United Stand, or uh, Mark Goldbridge, or his famous FIFA rants. He basically said, when you pay a youngster that much money, you're basically giving them a lot of power. And they think, just because they're getting paid 100 grand a, a week, and they're at that age, and they've got life fired at them so easily, they can basically do whatever they want, and they can't, because at the end of the day... It's either uh, you either be a humble human being or you either be a disgusting animal. And that's something which, unfortunately, Benjamin Mendy and Mason Greenwood have taken. And I'm all I'm all open to the argument of... of um, I'm, I'm open to the argument of um, innocent till proven guilty. But there is an astonishing amount of, of evidence of Mason Greenwood and Benjamin Mendy. And if, it, if they get found guilty... Um, then that's it. Their careers are done. They're never going to be footballers. Nobody will ever, ever want to see them again. But if they don't get found guilty, um, if, they, if that doesn't happen, then they'll continue to play football. And who knows, they probably might do it again. But we, we, we don't know. We don't know. Anything until proven guilty. Ah, here we are. Hey, you're back with us. The first time I'm back. Oh, right, sorry. Oh, right. Ali's back, everyone. Yeah. Um, so, basically, I was saying on I was saying on the podcast, um, uh, did you hear what Mark Goldbridge said um, about when you pay someone too much money, uh, like a youngster, they'll, they can do whatever uh, yeah. they want? Yeah. Yeah. And, again, I'm, I'm open to um, innocent till proven guilty, but there's a lot of evidence between Greenwood and Benjamin, Benjamin Mendy. And they're probably going to get found guilty, aren't they? They, they should be gone. Yeah. I'm surprised how they can still get paid a thousand pound a week. Greenwood had a hell of a career. Greenwood had a hell of a career ahead of him. Yeah, I mean, he, he got it going. He was playing for Man United. He was playing for his national team. Yeah. He was scoring goals. Mm. Benjamin Mendy, he won the World Cup. He had a fantastic... He had um, a couple of years left in his career, and that's all gone. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah. Right, so basically, everyone... Can we leave it off here, then? What? Can we leave the podcast off here, then? Yeah, um, but can we still talk online? Yeah, right, so we're going to go now. I have been Connor, the Manchester City fan, or in Ali's eyes, the disgusting Manchester City fan. And the, and Ali, the uh, horrible Man United fan, would you like to say goodbye? Yeah, no, no. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>